it's, you kind of bring up the really the politics of of that friction, right? And yeah. I I wanted to ask you about um about the politics of data because that's a big part of your work. So, um, you know, I was reading Alexander Galloway's written that um, network technologies had this utopian promise because of interactivity, right? Which is something that writing didn't have, mass media forms didn't have. Um, but that the same technologies have now become instruments of control and organization. Totally. And, you know, I, it made me think about your work um, um, at the New York Times as a research and development lab working on uh, open paths, which is described as a personal data locker. Mm -hmm. um, and it enables users to retain control over their own data. So it's described as an experiment in personal data sovereignty. And I thought that was really interesting, partly because um, it's so different than the way we usually think about data. Yeah. And so I was wondering if, if, um, if you could speak to that idea of openness and control um, and, that I, and that idea of maybe rethinking data or the politics of data. Yeah. Yeah, one of the goals of Open Paths for me um, was to rethink the... the politics around data collection as it relates to organizations that have that power, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there's, there's some sense with, with, we'll pick on Google or, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. that there's a trade-off that you use Google services and you, you extract some value for that, you know, it adds something to your life and they're free, um, but they're gathering data based on that and, you know, advertising to you uh, or selling that data or doing whatever else, you know, but that, that data belongs to them and they have a responsibility to keep it private, um, you know, to not like leak your data everywhere. And, you know, we've seen that in all these kind of data breaches mm -hmm. uh, that happened. What was the one just happened with like the dating site? Yeah, actually Madison. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like this big controversy because you're like, well, they, they need to be responsible with the data that they have. Mm -hmm. Um, which is all well and good, you know, and they should be, but, but there's this underlying sense that to use these services, you're surrendering your data and then they have a right to that, mm -hmm. um, and that they need that right in order to provide you with that service. But that's not entirely true. There could be other mo models of data sharing that, are, that, are, that don't function in that same way. So, uh, with open paths, you know, it's, it's responding to the fact that anyone who's carrying a mobile device is sharing their location, you know, with a couple different corporations. So if you have an iPhone, I have an iPhone, I use AT&T. AT&T has a record of everywhere I go. Uh, they do need that record to locate my phone <laughs> to provide cell service to me. Um, Apple also collects all that data, so Apple knows how I'm moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but there's a default in that I don't know where I've been. Mm -hmm. I mean, I experienced it, but I don't have access to that data. There's no, uh, I can't go to Apple and get my location history, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a raw form that I could then do something with, you know, whatever it is that I might want to do with it. Maybe I make an art piece, maybe I share it uh, to epidemiological like researchers, maybe I, you know, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no default apparatus for that and so first open paths was to produce that you know the fact that there's all these other people tracking my data well I'll, I'll, I'll track my location and generate my own data set mm -hmm. for my own purposes um, so you know and, that, and that's that's a subtle distinction there's all kinds of apps that track location open paths is doing the same thing that all they're doing but then it's just kind of offering it up to you mm -hmm. um, but then the second thing was this idea that, uh, you know, who's privileged with that data. So open paths, uh, all the data is encrypted on the server side. So if I run open paths servers, I can't see anyone's data because it's encrypted and only they have the keys. Mm. Um, and that's very different. You know, if you mm. said, you know, Google, like you can collect all this information, but you can't look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and be like, wait, what? That's not the deal. Um, 
but it can be functional. So with open paths, you can then share your data on your terms willingly with any kind of research project that requests access to it. Mm -hmm. So there's a mobility study, you know, at a university in, in, uh, in Europe and they want to look at, you know, people that have been to particular cities. And so they send a request and then you can share that information with them. Mm -hmm. And that's a brokerage between the individual and the, and the third party that wants the data. And it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't imply a privilege on the, on the part of the actual apparatus that's, that's generating the data. Mm -hmm. If that's clear. So, so there's, mm -hmm. there's a fundamentally different assumption about like where the power lies, uh, you know, who owns what, um, with this focus on the individual and this focus on kind of, uh, yeah, personal sovereignty, sovereignty over, uh, uh, over, over your information. And it's not something, this model is not going to be adopted, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the gesture of that project, I think, was to show that other ways exist. Mm -hmm. You know, we could come up with something uh, that does not always say, you know, the corporation has like an absolute right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, to the information that it supposedly needs for its its services. Uh -huh. But making those those options visible is exactly. something that's 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 been talked about, right? That yeah, things things go invisible, right? And, it, you know, I mean, the, the problem is that any app you use, you get that terms and conditions right. and you say accept and it's a completely, you know, ineffective uh, means of establishing a relationship or agency. You know, you mm -hmm. click that, you have no idea. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a legalese, it's a, it's a, a total kind of, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> dysfunctional uh, relationship between the the technology provider and the individual mm -hmm. you know can we make that relationship actually meaningful so that you're you're not just surrendering like oh i don't know what they're looking at i don't know what they're doing with this but you're actually involved and have some stake in uh, where the information that's connected to you like how it's being used mm -hmm. um and there's a larger you know kind of politics there i think uh you know, Ranciere talks about the political, you know, in terms of not necessarily like the debate between, you know, two political parties or something, but like what's recognized as speech to begin with, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to have a voice, to have something that, you know, is heard, like, you know, that's, that's the side of the political mm -hmm. and, you know, acts of resistance or whatever else are, are kind of, you know, putting yourself forward as, like, this is speech, I'm saying something, you know, I'm mm -hmm. changing the terms of the conversation in some way to recognize, uh, you know, something that was not heard before. 